What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. So today, I want to talk about using the Gecko Trading Bot and running the import via command lines. Again, just to remind you guys, for people that don't know what Gecko Trading Bot is, it is an automated trading bot that you can set up to trade crypto for you while you're sleeping. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about importing backtesting data via the command line. And the reason why you need to import backtest data via command line is ultimately comes back down to this is being able to run the gecko trading bot without having to wait for the warm-up period because in the ui mode of the gecko trading bot you have to let the trading bot download enough data for it to warm up to a particular strategy again the warm-up process is how many candles it needs to have in order to for a particular strategy to run in the optimal situation. So for example, in here, like for RSI, for example, it uses, if we go into the settings, it uses the inputs of a 14 candle interval. So it needs to calculate the previous 14 candle in order to generate the RSI that you're looking at right now. And that's what the Gecko Trading Bot needs. So whatever strategy you're using that uses particular indicators, let's say that your strategy uses SMA, a simple moving average of a thousand days or a thousand candles, it depends on your candle set, right? So if, you, if you're if you running on an hourly chart, you would need 1,000 candles of 1,000 hours. So if you're running on a much lower time frame of, let's say, five minutes, for example, you would need 1,000 five-minute candles. So again, that would take a quite a long time if you have to wait through that warm-up period. But let's go ahead and walk you through the basics of setting up the import process. So the basic steps are really this. I mean, I would suggest definitely doing this. Get the latest data from XFFF's data set because he has a some sort of automated process where he downloads the latest candle set of data for all the popular exchanges, Binance, GDAX, Bitfinex, all these other exchanges. He has the full history, if you want the full history, or which is very large for some exchanges like Binance, which have so many different trade pairs, or compared to something like GDAX, which only have like a few trade pairs. You can download the whole entire history, or you can just download the last seven days, the 14 days, or up to the 60 days. The idea is, once you download from this set, you will have a good enough portion, at least in my opinion, to cover any sort of warm-up period that your strategy needs. So as I suggest, get the 60 days unless you know 100% sure the warm-up time for your strategy needs is significantly less. Let's say your strategy only requires Bollinger Bands, as you can see here, and nothing else. And Bollinger Bands only requires 20 candles by default. Then yeah, you only need 20 candles. You probably can get by with the 7 days. So after you did that, the second thing is to run the import process to import the remaining data. Again, even though XFFF's data sets is they update every single day, you're almost guaranteed to have been missing some data between when the data set is updated to when you start your trading bot. So what you need to do is import the remaining data set, the remaining hours, so that you have the complete set of uh, data so that Gecko is able to stitch whatever you have to whatever is live and then use all that historical data as warm-up. And then finally, the third thing is you're ready to run the trade bot the, or the paper trader. Once you have updated the data set that you got from XFFF and import it to the most recent minute that the exchange has. So that's the basic process. So let's go ahead and go through it right now. First thing to do is you need to set up the config file for import. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, you want to make a copy of the config file and I am setting up this way. So I'm setting it up so that I would have a config-backtest, config-import, and config-trader. If you're following the instructions on Gecko Trading Bot's website, you could probably just use a config.js file. You could just name it that if that's what you want. But in my opinion, it's better to have three separate files because then you will have each of these config file configure for whatever purpose you need. So I have one for backtest, I have one for import, and I have one for trader. And they're all organized alphabetically so I can just easily find them. So once you made a copy, the first thing you want to do is open the file and go to config.watch section to the exchange and trade pair you want to download. So in here, again, inside Visual Studio Code, this is config.watch section that you want to configure your exchange and your trade pair that you want to be importing. This has to match whatever data set you already downloaded from XFFS data sets. So after that, you want to set the Trading Advisor Performance Analyzer to false and set Candle Writer to true. So Trading Advisor is right over here and you want to set that to false again because you're not actually 
running any trade going on, so there's no need to have the trading advisor active. And same thing with the performance analyzer, somewhere down here, because let's do a search for it and disable that, set that to false as well, because you're just importing candles. So you just want to go to the candle writer and make sure you set that to true, enable to true, and that's basically it. The last thing you will have to do is set the date range. So if you're downloading what's not covered by XFFS data, just set the from date. Again, this is definitely the best way to do it because if you try to download, let's say, even more than a few days of data directly using this import process, it is super slow. It's not fast. I mean, there's just no way around it. This is how slow it is. I wish there was a faster way, but it's not. It's not fast at all. It's going to take, I would say, even for one day of data, we're talking about like about 15 minutes to download one day of data. So it depends on the exchange again. The more trades there are, the more data there are, it might take even longer. But let's just say about 15 minutes for one day, you think about it. So after one week, we're talking about like almost two hours. And then you're spending days if you're going beyond that. So again, that's definitely the reason why to go to XFFS dataset site, download from the dataset, and just append to it using the import function. Again, you can go by the date that is listed on XFFF's dataset, or what I suggest is actually, please go directly into Gecko's UI over here, and just go to local data, and just say scan available dataset. And from here, you can tell what time does the datasets leave off of. So in this case, for USD to Litecoin for GDAX, the last updated was on May 14, uh, 0813. What you then have to do is go into the config file and scroll down to the configuring importing section and just set that. So you want to set that to May 14, 0813. So then you will have the import process import right after the last bit of data they have from the data set. Let's say that you know you already downloaded this data and you accidentally re importing again. Gecko doesn't care, it'll just re import exactly the same date range again. So even if you have these existing candles in there, it's still going to re-import them back into, it's still going to re-import them again and again. It does not care whether or not you have them. So that can be a problem. And I'll explain that in one bit. So right now, after you import them by running no gecko dash dash config, config dash import dot js, or whatever file name you decide to name it as, if you just decide to name it as config dot js, then that's the name you want to use. And then you say dash dash import, and it'll go through the import process. It'll probably look something like this. So yeah, you'll see something like this here, which says processing 1,000 new trades from X amount of times, and how many minutes was processed. You can see the date range that was processing. And once it's done, it'll actually show up in the history folder right here. So you click on history, you'll see the gdax db That's where it shows up. And again, actually, this is this is where you have to download the data set. So, so sorry for not actually explaining that to you earlier, but this is what you're supposed to do. So once you get the data set from this repo right here, you're supposed to drop it into the history directory. These two other files are actually generated by Gecko when you start running the Gecko trading bot. So that's basically it. But here's one crucial thing that I was talking about before regarding the import process. Let's say you set the from date, because if you don't set the to date, it'll just set to the current minute that is currently set at, so download everything from the front date to the current minute. And that's great and all, but then what happened is, from the front date to the current minute, it'll go through the download process. So it'll take probably something, like I said, if it's a day of data, it'll take about 15 to 20 minutes approximately to finish the download process. But once you finish the download process, you have to do the import process again. That's very, very crucial. You have to do the import process again, because if you don't, Gecko won't be able to stitch together the live data uh, and your historical data together because you're missing a gap. You will, you'll have a gap of missing data of about 15 minutes. So that's why after you run it, so let's say that you know you run it and then the cover, let's say, you know, to this day's current minute, you have to change the date here again to your current date. Let's say it's 15, whatever it is, 15, and then you want to set it to exactly the same minute that it ended on. So then it would then import the last 11 minutes or so data and in this case, it'll probably take you like less than two minutes to finish. So at this point, once it does that, then it's going to be able to stitch together the backtest data, the historical data, with the live data that's coming in from the exchanges, and then it'll be able to start the trading bot without the warm-up period. 
But that's my video for today, guys. I'll be covering the trading bot process tomorrow. I know today's video is a little bit shorter than usual just because I'm planning to go to the consensus job fair tomorrow just to see what's going on. Maybe there is a company that I'm interested in working in for, maybe not. The point being, I just want to um, take a look over there and it's free as well. So definitely I want to check it out. So that's why I'm cutting today's video short to just the import process today, the actual trading bot process tomorrow. And then we'll see what other topics are covered on Thursday and Friday. But anyway, guys, that's my video for today. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.